Okay guys, we got another got another chess lesson for you guys. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it right here. This is a video from, from a few days ago that just got posted. Uh, it's my first crack at something with like real production value. And uh, if you didn't if you didn't already check it out, go check out this video right now. It involves my gameplay and other people other people commenting on my gameplay and then you voting for them, stuff like that. I had a lot of fun putting it together, so be sure to check that out and leave me some feedback. But in the meantime, let's, uh, let's talk about chess some more. So I talked about I talked about the opening in uh, the last time that I talked about chess, and I talked about these four center squares. Uh, so we got d4, d5, e4, and e5. Uh, and I said it's important to control these four squares in the opening of the game, and then maintain control of those four squares. But I didn't tell you why. The reason being is that if you completely dominate the center. Uh, something like this, right? If you completely dominate the center, if you notice, all his pieces aren't, they can't easily travel from one part of the board to the other. Um, they have to, it's going to take them time to develop, but if you control the center, you can hop your pieces over to the queen side, the king side, the center, any portion of the area. Now, take all the pieces off the board. If you look at the knight, for example, a knight does not like to be on the side of the board. Uh, simply because from this position, the knight can only attack here, 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 and here. That's only four squares. If you scoot him over to the corner, he hates that even more because now he's only attacking two squares. There's a saying in chess when it comes to the knight, and that's a knight on the rim is grim. Knights like the center of the board because now they're attacking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. Also yesterday I mentioned that a knight and a and a bishop are both roughly worth about three pawns, and the bishop is worth about three and a quarter pawns. Now you have to take into account that everything in chess is contextual. Sometimes your pieces, uh, like a bishop, will be more valuable than something like a rook, or sometimes a knight will be something more valuable than something like a bishop. So if you take a look at this position, this is what's called a completely closed pawn structure. Uh, what that means is that the pawns are locked in with each other. There's no way you're going to be able to break this up unless you can get an opposing piece to disrupt the bottom of the pawn chain, which would be this one. You don't necessarily want to go for this guy because then you can just recapture with that pawn. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, a piece that can, that can actually get through to the other side would be a knight. You can actually literally jump over. A bishop can't. A bishop's going to be completely locked in. He's going to be totally useless. So in that type of a situation, a bishop is actually worth less than a knight. But if you have an open game, let's say your pawns look like this. You know, there's other pieces on the board. In this situation, a bishop is actually worth more than the knight. Generally, because now a bishop has complete freedom of movement, it can navigate from one side of the board to the other. Uh, so there are five major concepts in chess uh, that's going to determine whether or not you win a chess game. Those concepts are king safety, pawn structure, time, or what other what is otherwise called initiative, uh, material, and did I already say space? I haven't said that yet. So. Uh, King safety, we're going to talk about that today. I'll cover, I'll, I'll cover all the other four concepts in, in later episodes of this, whatever the fuck this is. Uh, but let's talk about king safety real quick. If you look down at the board, a lot of you guys were, con uh, were confused with the move. You know, again, this is for beginners. A lot of you advanced players already know this, and that's fine. But uh, when you're starting off in the beginning, of, in, the, in the opening of chess, it's important to castle either one side or the other. Uh, a lot of you guys were confused when you saw me make this move. It's legal in chess, as long as you haven't moved, uh, moved your king or the rook that you want to castle, and there's nothing in between, you can move your king over two spaces and swing your rook over like that, and it's called castling. The reason why that's so important is because if you have a pawn structure like this, your king is nice and safe, tucked in this corner behind all these pawns, especially if you can get like a knight up here, another bishop over here, something like that. You can see it's really hard to get to this king. Kings don't like to be in the center of the board for too long. So if you're beginning in chess, uh, there's a saying, it's called castle early and often. That's not always going to be the case depending on which opening you play. But generally when you're just starting out, try and castle your king uh, as early as you possibly can to get him to safety. You can also castle on the queen side. You don't move him all the way over here. You always move the king over two spaces and jump your rook over like this. 
One thing that people don't realize is that you actually cannot, uh, you cannot castle through check. So what that means is if I had a bishop over here, I cannot castle in this position because I'm actually moving my king through a square that's been checked. You can't do that. Um, and then obviously you can't move, oops, you can't move into check, right? That would be illegal. Um, so there you go. That's th those are my tips for you today. Uh, is you know the relative value of pieces change according to the, the position on the board, and then also get your king to safety. I want to show you guys one more thing. So I want you to take a look at this position and now pause the video and figure out how to checkmate the black king. And whoop, move my hand. Uh, pause the video and figure out how to checkmate the black king in three moves, starting now. All right. Now that you've got an opportunity to look at the screen for a couple minutes, maybe you figured it out. The first move is going to be right here. So that's actually a double check. You're opening up a check from the from the white queen, and you're checking the king with the with the knight at the exact same time. Uh, Black's only move is to move his king over here because rook is guarding this file. Now you can actually check right here, which a lot of you think. A lot of you might be thinking it's stupid because you can just take back with the black rook, just like that. But now, do you guys see it yet? Pause it and see if you can find the best move right now. Alright, now that you've unpaused, checkmate. It's called a smothered mate because the black king can't move. He's trapped in by his own pieces and this is actually my favorite kind of checkmate in chess. I've only got to do it once. I've literally played over a thousand games of chess. I've only got to do that once. These bids are, are interesting. I like them. Okay. Oh, it's hot in here. <sighs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> so I got another puzzle for you. Take a look at this position and tell me what the best move for white is. Go ahead and pause and look at the screen now. Alright, now that you've unpaused, watch this. So you think, big deal, I'm only attacking the, the queen, right? But actually, when I moved this knight, I opened up a check. This is called a discovery check. When you move a piece and it opens up a file to check the enemy king, the king can't do anything about this except block it. He can either block it with the, the queen, just like this. That gets him out of check momentarily, or he has to move. In either case, he's going to lose his queen, either by taking it with the knight, or if he moves it up here, I can take it with the knight or the bishop. So that's called a discovery attack. Whenever you can pull off a discovery, it's really brutal because you're, you're, you're not only checking the king, you're actually attacking another piece at the exact same time. And that's my chess lesson for you guys today. I'll be posting more of these soon. I actually just downloaded Chess Master on Xbox Live, so expect some, expect some chess commentaries from me pretty soon. What? Oh my god!